Welcome, everybody. This is the IMSA pre-race show with me, Justin Bell. And for the next 30 minutes or so, I'm going to be your eyes and ears here at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca because this is a very special track. There's so much to see. And of course, stories, human interest stories of incredible drivers driving those magnificent race machines on one of the best tracks. Now, it actually all came about uh, in the late 50s when there was this rush of racetrack building here in the United States. And this is one of the main ones that was built. Watkins Glen, Elkhart Lake, Sebring, the in-course at Daytona. And of course, only one of those, Riverside, is the one no longer racing. What we're going to do, we're going to have 30 minutes of action. I've got some tweets coming in, and of course, that leads right up to the invocation and then the big race. But as you can see, not many people looking this way, but look this way, and it's absolutely jam-packed. And I want to start off chatting with a guy who's done so much, Tracy Crone. Lovely to see you here. Good to see you, guys. Now, of course, Tracy, you have raced all over the world, Abu Dhabi, Silverstone, Monza, some of the best tracks, and yet still come back to Laguna, Laguna Seca. It is special, isn't it? Oh, this is one of the most beautiful places in the world. I mean, look at this. Beautiful sky, beautiful weather, beautiful beach, beautiful cars, beautiful women. Save the whales, why not? <laughs> Save the whales, exactly. And of course, when you look here, the caliber of competition, I mean, when you see Vissa Keller in the Ferrari just in front of you, it must make you realize coming sports car racing was the way to go. Well, there's nothing better than this. This, this is a beautiful sport. What, what could possibly be better? The only thing that could be better is seeing them behind me. Ah, that is your job, and Nick Johnson's job, of course. Thanks, Tracy. We're going to move forward a little bit. Of course, the Ferrari is so popular here for good reason. Who doesn't look love driving a Ferrari? I'm just going to bounce forward a little bit here. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Come over here. And, of course, right here, working my way past. Now, of course, one of the very popular Porsches running here, combination of an American-based driver with a factory driver. Over here, we have Brian Sellers in the Falcon number 17. Brian, what well I mate. And, of course, this is a tough track. You've done so well. Last season was really a, a breakthrough season for the for the team. Why is this track so hard? You're actually at the back of the grid, and yet other races have been at the front. Yeah, it's difficult because the conditions change so significantly from session to session, beginning of the day to the end of the day. And I think we just missed the end of the day a little bit. You know, we were really strong early, and uh, we just didn't get it together in time for qualifying. So unfortunately, it's a tough place to pass, and we have a long way to go. But we'll be all right. Hey, listen, I'm going to ask. Wolf, hey man, how are you? Hey, good. Yeah. You know, Laguna Seca, Maserati to Laguna Seca, it is a challenging track. Um, and we've been asked, some people have been asking questions about it. For you, what's the hardest corner on the track? Everyone says the court screw, what is the hardest one for you? For me, uh, the first half in turn two, braking is the hardest. It's downhill, it's a little bumpy, and it's very easy to lock the front wheel and then run wide into turn two. And then uh, if a car is behind you, it can pass you easy at the inside. So that's for me the hardest part here. And of course, here's a funny one. Now, I can say that I can ask you this because I am a driver too. Do you have any weird little, and you know each other very well now as teammates for years, does he have any weird little pre race rituals? People are interested in our superstitions. It's a good question. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. You do it in privacy. What are they? Yeah, yeah, I can't tell you, but I can't tell you his either. He turned red on camera and embarrassed. But, you know, actually, if you can believe it, though, neither of us are, are too superstitious. When I first started, I had all kinds of rituals. But when I drove with him anymore, he just doesn't care about it at all. So I kind of adapted it. It makes living so much easier. <laughs> it does. And of course, the only superstition you should have is the one of speed. That's the one we all want. Here's a little sights and sounds of Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca. What a season we have had so far in the Tudor United Sports Car Series. But this weekend, we're at Long Beach on the oldest street circuit in North American history. In the shortest race on the calendar, the action will be crammed in to those two hours. Green, green, green. Go, go, go. It's going to be a long run down to turn one. Watch that turn one. It's a dangerous first corner here. Clean it all, just bottlenecks up, and he got forced out wide. Nice job, man. Nice job. Get that patrol car if you can while his tires are cold. Edwards finally forced the issue. Prio comes with him, as does Gavin. Everybody goes around the car at once. That's the ever flow of a street course. Somebody will make a move, open a hole up, and then the race is on. Oh, oh, oh. He's into him. He's into him. He stayed into him the whole time. Oh, he's right into me. We were watching that. He's done a great job. Keep going. Hit this lap, hit this lap, driver change. Strategy play right here. We see the first domino to fall. Three, two, 
One on the board. There you see, Taylor's in. Rojas does another lap. Hang out here, Memo. One more good lap. Go, 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 go. Clears the fast, clears the fast. Uh, Memo Rojas handing over to Scott Pruitt. Also, the five car in. Go, 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 go. The five car's going to be the one out. Try to get him here on these cool tires. Cold tires. Pruitt dives it down to the inside in turn eight. Jordan Taylor goes with him. Good job, Scott. Focus forward here. Five laps to go. One GT ahead of Pruitt. Keep pushing here. Talk about intense. Jordan Taylor is now within a second. Taylor's going to get held up a bunch as they come into the carousel. Uh, hey, oh. That killed him right there. That could have decided the race right there. There's no quitting Jordan Taylor. Mullet power, baby. Last lap, last lap. White flag, 1.9 miles to go. He is running out of time. Corvette, so dominant. Magnuson across the line. Nice job, man. Nice job. All right, thanks, guys. A perfect weekend. Taylor not giving up oh, no. onto the front straightaway, out of the hairpin. Scott Pruitt, Mimo Rojas, they take the victory at Long Beach. Great job, guys. Great job. Okay, you'd think I'd know better. This is my show after all. That was obviously the sights and sounds of Long Beach and a man who knows only too well what went on there. Jan Magnussen, amazing. I mean, to come here off the back of your win at Long Beach. Tell us a little bit about that race because it's no cakewalk racing a street circuit, is it? No, no, but Long Beach is uh, it's quite good for a street circuit in terms of it has a, a lot of grip immediately from the first session. There's good grip in the track. So uh, it's a place where you can go. You can actually push a lot more than usual uh, on street circuits because you have to be really careful with where the grip is. But th this place has a lot of grip and you can push immediately and, and, and really use all of the circuit without putting yourself at risk all the time. And of course here at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca, the barriers are about 200 feet across a lot of gravel, but you still, Antonio Garcia managed to secure pole. It's that sort of reinforcement of performance that, of course, is very good for your car, right? The number three car, it's really good for you guys. Yeah. No, I, I've always enjoyed coming here to Laguna Seca. It's very, very different from Long Beach. It's a low, low grip for, uh, for everybody, so you're struggling a little bit to find the grip and find the balance. But uh, I think the guys did a fantastic job getting the correct getting the right setup for Antonio for qualifying so he can go and, and uh, get his first pole position for a COVID racing. Okay, you've got to make your way to the front because I know you're starting the race. But by the way, I got a tweet in from a guy saying, my name's John, I'm from Denmark, say hi. <laughs> you must know him, there's only like 12 of you. All right. Okay, I'm going to just rush over here before I come and chat with the Viper guys because here are some of my favorite people within motor racing. These are the NF heroes, the Children's Tumor Foundation kids. And here they are, look at his lovely Dakota who's been going through an awful lot right now. But Dakota, tell me, you, in the last three years, have been to so many races. Why do you like racing? Um, I like it because you get to meet new drivers and you get to see how the race is going. You can see how um, people win you, and it's a good time when you, when you go to the races. So you think lots of young people should come to races now? Yeah. Yes. That's cool. And of course, you can see the t-shirts there. But if people want to find out more about CTF, how do they do it? They go to ctf.org. Uh, well, you see exactly that. Go to the. Th this is probably the most interactive charity foundation involved in modern motor racing, and of course they do so much. Kids come to race. The drivers love it. Seven cars are carrying their logo this race. But behind us, we see two guys who also look good in romper suits. You know, Emma and Bomarita. How are you? All right. Hey, so listen, Jonathan. One of our Twitter questions was, as a local. What does it mean to come and race at this Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca? Uh, it's very special. I mean, we're a world famous track and to grow up here and watch some of the history that's happened and just to see it from the fan perspective from a lot of years and now getting to be here, share that with friends and family. Um, it, it really is special. So we're going to try to put on a good show today. Kuno's starting the race and we had a good warm up this morning. So we're expecting good things. Yeah, so I just asked, we're gonna, you're going to see a Twitter question come up, the viewers at home, and, and that's why when you get the chance to race uh, on your home track, it's a very important one. But obviously, you two guys, this is sort of team good looking. As you notice, some of the other teams are a little short and not so hot, but these two guys are fast in the car. And of course, Kuno, when you're so different from when we raced at Le Mans, so different, set up here is critical, and of course, you guys haven't hit it. You guys are towards the back. Hate to bring it up. 
Yeah, you know what you said. It. I mean, yesterday we struggled a bit, and uh, today our Penzoil Ultra Viper GTSR is just right there. Warm up went really, really great. Jonathan and myself, we just you know put our head down, we started cracking away at it, and it's a tough race. It's two hours, and you know anything could happen. And Personally, I think there's going to be a little bit of paint rubbing going on. That's what, I, that's what we want. I have no doubt there's paint rubbing. Now, I'm going to bring this up because obviously I, it, it didn't go that well for me because I'm no longer in a Viper race suit. But in 1997, I was very fortunate I secured clinch the FIA GT2 World Championship by overtaking the Porsche for the win here. And on Thursday, I got the chance to drive around the track in the new TA Viper. Just take a look. It was They let me behind the wheel. Okay, then, heading out of turn 11 onto the front straight here at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca. And let's just presume I made a great exit as I head up under the Continental Tire Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca bridge. And this, as you take the green flag, is quite an unusual corner because it's turn one. And instead of going through turn one, you actually go over it. The car goes quite light, obviously higher downforce, prototype DP car, a lot easier. But down into turn two, make sure you're very precise on the brakes Late braking is key, but not too much as you wash out, as we accelerate hard out into what I think are the two hardest corners on the track, because it's so flat. You're trying to always carry as much speed through here as you can, but every time I think I've ever driven around here, especially as I go into turn four, I'm thinking, oh, I could have been faster, especially on the exit. You let the car all the way out, get it onto the rumble strips, and this is a great overtaking spot if you get it right. We're heading down into turn five, down to third gear, feeding as much power on, rolling the speed through the corner, and I love it, it's uphill. It's really nicely cameraed, so you can definitely get the car moving through there. But now turn six is very tricky. Watch the cars during the race. They take the compression there, boom! Oh, the suspension is maxed out as you make your way up this hill towards the famous corkscrew. Now, of course, the corkscrew, like most things in life, is all about getting it right from the start. It's really not that hard. You get turning right, and then the rest of it all works out perfectly. Feeding down into this very difficult left-hander. It's a, it's a real balance between too much speed, a little bit of understeer and oversteer on the exit as we come down into turn 10. I love this corner. It's very nicely cambered. And then, of course, you're leading up to turn 11. Now, turn 11, great place to overtake great place to be overtaken and also it's your key to finish a fi finishing off your lap and being fast down the main straight. That was the lap, Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca in the latest SRT Viper. I want more. Talking of looking good, those guys are way too fast, young and talented, good looking, my goodness. Anyway, moving my way over here. I see this young lad, very important, I think, the Tudor United Sports Car Series, IMSA, are dedicated to actually getting young fans involved. So you're, you're obviously here enjoying it. What's your name? Justin. Justin, oh my God. I didn't set that up at all. Anyway, you make sure you come back for the next 50 years. We depend on it. Okay, so heading down here, obviously all the GT cars, these are the GT LM cars. There was already the race this morning, which was the prototype challenge and the GTD category. And now this race, is it's a really unique setup it's the first time this year and the first time obviously in the history of the series that we have had the two main front running gt le mans cars and the prototype cars running on their own basically that's that's this track deserves it and it's going to be an amazing race so let me head over here we've already covered jan magnuson got pole in the corvette when I have a chat over here with a couple of my friends, John Edwards here. That was an amazing run. You had pole for so much of the time in the session. And of course, he's driving his 56 BMW. Oh. Hello. So obviously, it was a great time. Qualifying looks so good, but you still must be happy to be up at the front. Yeah, it's a solid run. But you know, sometimes you do these runs and you really feel like it's a pole run. And the car's doing almost everything you want it to do. And you feel like you've gotten everything out of it and you feel like, that's it, that's going to be pull. And unfortunately, Corvette just went two tenths quicker. So um, I was a little disappointed, to be honest, but nevertheless, solid starting position. We saw at Long Beach that the DPs can play a factor um, in the beginning of the race. So I think that'll be true here with uh, some of the starting drivers and the fact that we can get our tires up to temp quicker than they can. So um, uh, it's going to be interesting in the first few laps. You can see that the way you laid down that lap on light time on lap three was uh, standing. It took everyone else about another five laps. And of course, Dirk Muller, you, 
You've raced all around the world. You do the Nürburgring. I know you're one of the resident experts there. But when you come here with the almost, I'm going to say, the simplicity right now of a two-category race, it's the first time in the history of the series we've ever done that. How do you full course like, the, the traffic? What's it going to be like? You know what, first of all, John did a really good job yesterday. So um, I know he was a little disappointed that he didn't get the pole, but he really did good. And well, today it's a completely different uh, different race than uh, ever in the past. And yeah, you just said it, it's going to be flat out. That's what we're going to gonna believe. Um, I think there's probably only a yellow or maybe none maybe something like in Long Beach and um, for that it's a qualifying race so um, I think um, all the spectators are going to see great race here. They certainly are and of course Ben W one of the fan favorites and mine too so good luck guys see you later. All right as we walk over here hello red of course a perfect racing color the Momo suits there we're walking past moving past the pole sitting Corvette of Antonio Garcia and Magnussen and we are now at the tail end of the prototype category and what is happening here it is a unique situation these cars have no one else mixed up with them they are ready for flat-out fast racing and here's a little look this is our prototype Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca preview Just thinking about it, um, I'm getting a smile on my face. I love that track. We're really looking forward to go back to that place, not only because of the track, but the area is excellent, I think, for, for all the teams, uh, drivers, fans. It has a little bit of everything. It's one of my favorite tracks. Hometown, elevation, good passing, good flow to the track. I love racing there. It's a lot of fun. Seca is a very special racetrack. We all know it from the corkscrew corner. It really separates the, the, the good drivers and then uh, the little bit worse drivers. You arrive on top of that uphill section, you have to stab the brakes and then you almost go down to first gear. The way it's blind when you when you turn into the left, the only thing you see ahead of you is, is the top of the trees. We've seen a lot of action there, people trying to outbreak each other. We're looking forward to the big fights there. It is challenging because you can't see, but at the same time, it's really slow. In my opinion, the real challenge after the corkscrew is the next corner. It's unbelievably quick. You were basically just hanging on to the, to the steering, trying to go wide open. You go downhill, fast left-hander, and then you turn 10. Big commitment. Just the way it catches the car and the flow through there is probably my favorite corner of the track. Turn seven, there's an elevation change, there's a bump in the middle of the corner. Every single lap, you don't know if you're gonna make it or not. Not only is that a great track, it's a very cool venue, and it was always one of those tracks that you kind of grew up watching and, and hoping to be as favorite highlights of the year for me, so looking forward to going there. And now for a little Twitter question from our fans out there. They've been responding very well and healthily all week. You're looking at the 07 Mazda right now, but this is a Twitter. Why are the two races? And it's a very good question. Actually, the real answer is the pit lane here can really only handle a maximum capacity of, pit, of crews operating and cars out on track. And of course, what better racetrack to split it up because the grid, the demand, the entrance has been overwhelming. So two races, twice as much fun. That's the way we look at it. I'm going to pop over here because Tristan Nunez, a great Bell family friend, and of course, Tristan watching you come up through karting, and now you're in, to me, just look at that, guys. Look at that car. That has to be the most beautiful car right now at this racetrack. True work of art it is. Uh, now, Tristan, uh, a question that's come through on Twitter is the corkscrew. Is it really that dangerous? Is it really that difficult? I wouldn't put it in the, in the category of, of difficult, more so as um, thrilling. You know, you go through there, uh, it's a huge drop, and your stomach just comes to your chest. And it really is an amazing feeling. 
And of course, for you, you're driving with Jolo. I'm going to go and have a quick word with him. Good luck. Is he, He's starting, obviously. All right, Tristan, one of these young, strong, fit, fast young drivers. Jolo, let's have a quick word. You're going to start, mate. Of course, the demands are starting. You're somewhat near the back. <laughs> uh, does that mean you can pace yourself a little bit, just follow what goes on, get the tires up to speed? Right here at Mazda the raceway, turn one, or turn two actually, is pretty calamity. So I got a little bit of both. I got to watch the DPs ahead of me, but I got the GTs coming up behind. Our Mazda Sky Active prototype's doing great this weekend. Uh, we qualified 11th overall, which is fantastic. For me, we're going to attack going into one. We're going to get this thing hopefully farther up the grid. Always makes for good TV when a young guy says that. All right, Joe, good luck. All right, come on, guys, let's head down here. Boris said, who is not a young stud, he just is strong and fast and about 52. You can see him over there, he's waving at us. There's Boris, and of course we go move on here to the 60 car. Nice to see Oz Negri in the car, getting ready to start. And of course now we make our way into what is, at least at this racetrack, the fast, pointy, sharp end of the prototype grid. Over here, oh, there's Ricky. Hey, mate. You are right? How are you? Sorry to interrupt. I know as a driver, it's always a bit of a pain when you're about to put it on your earphones. The car has performed so well all year, been really strong, but a win is really what you and your brother probably yeah. really want at this point. Tell us, this track, you both working together, I mean, I know the rest of the broadcasters will ask really meaningful questions, but what's it like driving with your brother? Oh, it's great. Uh, you know, we're both competitive, and last year we wanted to kill each other, but now that we're in the same car, you know, we can both support each other, and we're not, you know, against each other. We're just working together, and it's been really constructive. Uh, we just decide who starts and finishes each race by who feels comfortable, so it's been a really, really good time. I'm glad you don't share a helmet with him because that awful thing he's got growing out the back. We might just throw a little clip of it. There's a little... This is a picture of Jordan Taylor in his, with his hair and his new T-shirt. I don't know, at least, as my dad said, you look really smart and tidy and you're probably the one to start the race. Good luck, Ricky. Hair Jordan. Isn't that fantastic? All right, let's move up. We're heading up to the pole winner. Look at these beautiful cars. Action Express car did so well here. These guys, they're separated by mere tenths of a second, which round here, you try to do that on your stopwatch. It's almost impossible to split the difference. Scott Sharp here getting ready to start. Don't know if he's under the umbrella. Need I say more? Um, if she was a driver, I think she could knock Danica on the head somehow. As we make our way past the Richard Westbrook car. Oh, there's Scott Sharp himself going to get ready into the car. And of course, now here we have it. The Ed Brown, Johannes Van Overbeck car. Number two, absolutely beautiful. And there he is. Look, he's, he's already up trying to get trophies. And I'm just going for a walk. Going for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, you started this weekend uh, a little more energetically than most because you did, what, an 80-mile bike ride to get here? 90. Don't shortchange me, Justin. <laughs> Why do you do that? Is it an annual thing or charity or just kicks? Uh, it's just an annual thing. A lot of guys like to ride. Uh, I do it for training, and a lot of guys on the tr uh, crew like to ride bikes, and just a great way to spend the day together and see some beautiful California landscape. And what's this trophy for? Pole position? Pole position. Designate a sober driver. That's fantastic. Can we just go over to the car quickly? I just want you, to, you guys to show me. Ed's just about to get in. Of course, Ryan Dial getting completely in the middle of my shot. Tell us something, tell the viewers something on this car that they wouldn't know. What, what's, what to you is one of the most amazing things about the cockpit? Remember, none of us get the chance to drive it. Well, in the cockpit, it's just uh, how small it is. I don't think anybody realizes how small it is. And, you know, everybody always asks it. Most race car drivers are so small, and it's because we can't fit in there if we weren't. But, uh, and just the sheer feeling of the, the, the G's and the speed that you, you feel inside that cockpit is just amazing. And Ed, a lot of pressure. Have you given, Johannes, have you given Ed any advice? Because leading the Tudor United Sports Car Series from the front of the grid, I'm not trying to build it up, but I am. What's it, how are you going to deal with it? You know, I'm not that smart of a guy. All I'm going to do is hit the gas pedal as hard as I can, and, you know, we'll just let instincts take over when we get down into turn two and see what happens. I mean, you know, that's, that's it. And, of course, two class race here. I mean, it really is sports car racing at its purest. It's necessitated by the track. But what do you really feel the anticipation of this race? The crowd's in for a good one, right? Absolutely. I hope so. Yeah, I think it's going to be a great race. I, you know, I think it could go all green, kind of like Long Beach. Um, so that uh, makes it a little tougher on strategy. But, uh, you know, it could go that way. And it's, it's going to be a good time. I think a good show for the fans. Ed, get yourself into the car. I know we're getting close. Thanks, guys. All right, turn around this way. Mar we're going to head up here and look at these guys. This is where it's all going to happen. Right over here. Just take a little jump. 
You can see, I want you to look at this. This is the famous turn one as they come up under the bridge. That is the view the drivers are looking forward to. It is an amazing race and one that all these drivers are looking forward to competing. As we look back, that truly is a spectacular pit lane lined with talent. So as we have a look down there, remember, tune in to Fox Sports 1 at 5.30 Eastern, just in a minute, for the Continental Tire Monterey Grand Prix. Enjoy the race. I'll see you at Belle Isle, guys.